Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pathway Ministries. We just want to welcome you guys. We just love your friendship. We're so grateful um, for what God is doing. Uh, yeah, so it is church time. So welcome your neighbor. You can wave at them. Say, hey, welcome to church. And if you're watching online, we want to welcome you. We want to see God impact your life for whatever you need today. Um, Psalm 107 verse 8 says, Oh, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, when you took that training we took by Buddy Bell, he really emphasizes, Oh, hallelujah. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Wow. Such as sit in darkness in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God and, and read, wrote off, basically, the counsel of the Most High. And because of that, he brought their hearts down. And they fell down, and there was no one to help. And then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of all their distress. Amen. 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 So I just want to say, I hope you're coming hungry today. If you have a longing soul and you say, God, I really need to be met. I need my soul to be filled with your presence. God is here to do that. And it's interesting that this scripture came up because we're going to talk in a bit about overcoming darkness. And so that is exciting. But uh, yeah, if you guys are here, you want to join us, you're welcome to stand with us at this time. If you're able to, if you're not, that's okay. Heavenly Father, we welcome you, we welcome your presence. We thank you so much for the Holy Spirit. And God, I just pray that you would meet every one of us right where we're at. Lord God, we just say that we're dependent upon you. We need you. And this morning, God, we're asking God that every person, every circle of influence here today, and in that whoever's watching, God, that you would touch their, not just them, but the whole circle of influence that they're involved in. Yes, Lord. And Father, we thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, we just bless you. Well, amen. Are you guys ready? Are you awake? Yes. I know it seems early. We used to always start church at 10 a.m. And now we have a late service, too. So I don't know what we're going to do after this. We might... I guess just expand. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. So thank you guys so much for joining us. I'll let the worship leader take over. Amen. Welcome here. Hallelujah. My Redeemer lives. Stand with us and sing. He lives. Hallelujah. We're rejoicing.
Our freedom doesn't depend on circumstances. Amen? <laughs> Amen. This was a good day. Amen? God is so good. And we are so thrilled to be with you guys. Um, thank you for those who have come in, those who are walking in and joining us online. God bless you. We welcome you. We're just going to go through a few announcements. Today, there's uh, your health guidelines, and there's our announcements. Praise God. Tuesday, 7 p.m. Testimony Tuesday. How many of you watched Testimony Tuesday last week? A few. It was good. Amen? It was a powerful time of uh, hearing testimony, how God rescues people. Amen? They're not too far gone. So we thank God for that. If you haven't watched it, um, you can go onto our YouTube channel. It should be up there probably this week. So uh, Wednesday... Oh, it says Bible Foundation, so we'll be taking a break, but we still got Winning Wednesday. Amen. Who likes to win? I like to win. I like to see Jesus win in my life. Yes. And so I'm, go I'm planning to be on online for that. So Joyce, uh, her material, uh, she needs to get ahead a little bit with some material, get some stuff ready, and it would make it a bit easier, she said, if she had a, a few weeks off maybe. So we thank God for her teaching. And we thank God for the Holy Spirit. Yes. Um, now, if you want to help with street outreach, you're welcome to text us, 306-280-9525. And uh, we want to thank those who have donated items. Uh, thank you so much. That goes a long ways to helping people. And, uh, you know, yesterday we got to pray with a few people and share the gospel. One young man was very angry as he was walking past us. and. I just told him God loved them or something, and then all of a sudden he came back with a friend, and he cooled down, and and then he wanted prayer. So thank God. You know, sometimes we have to look past the initial what we see, right? And not respond with our emotions, but with the heart of God. So we thank the Lord for that. Amen. Well, I think we're going to get back to some worship here. And then, oh yes, yeah, sign up. Please, right now, if you haven't signed up for next week's service, there's a uh, form in the back. Please go and sign up. We'll give you like a minute if you need. That's no problem, even during <laughs> worship. But because um, we've had a lot of calls for people who want to come, and but if we don't have names on, we don't know which service is going to be full or which one's not, and it's hard to plan if we don't have names. So it's really important to put your name down so that we can plan. I think this today second service will probably be pretty full. Uh, we've got some families that have moved back from Alberta. Uh, some of you remember our one sister, but she'll be here for the second service with her son and three kids. So praise God, new families are coming in, and we thank God for that. So anyway, the Lord is good. And uh, during this time as well, if you want to give during the, during the worship, just as an offering to God, we allow you to do that. If you want to give online, you can, or cash. Whatever works for you. So there's our uh, our email. We take e-transfer, pathwayrevival at gmail.com. Um, I actually think that's a nice way to go because we don't get fees taken off um, through Stripe. And I'm not here to bash Stripe, but I mean they're really shutting down people online right now just because of opinions. And I think sometimes we've got to watch our opinions, but at the same time, I think we've got to be careful about shutting people down. And so I wasn't too happy when I found out they were involved with shutting, shutting down uh, people online. And so, um, but anyway, I'll, I'm talking to Planning Center to see what uh, we're doing about that as, uh, as a group. So anyway, God is good, but um, if you do e-transfer, there's no fees to have to pay out. And, and it still goes into Planning Center, so you still get a tax receipt. Um, and it's really easy to track for us. So. Anyway, God bless you guys, and let's continue to worship. Okay, hallelujah. God is good. Yeah, I have a testimony too, actually, about yesterday. Um, we were actually at uh, parking out, uh, parked outside the, uh, one of the hospitals, and there was a young gal. She was uh, walking by, and she was looking on the ground, and every once in a while she picked something up, and I figured, well, she's probably picking up cigarette butts and, and uh, stuff like that. So, And I just felt kind of impressed for, to talk to her, but she was about at least 60 feet or more away from me. I was waiting in the van for Ivan. He was he was delivering something, and and um, 
So I'm like, ah, do I get out or don't I? Well, maybe I'll just wait and leave it and, you know, pray for her kind of. And, but she ended up, as she was walking along, picking up, picking up these cigarette butts, she was uh, coming to closer to the van, which was cool. She was going along the sidewalk and stuff, and I figured I knew what she was doing, but I, but I thought, you know, hey, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bash her and stuff. I rolled down my window and I said, "Can I help you with something? It looks like you're looking for something." And um, she said, "No, no, I'm just, I'm just picking up the cigarette butts." And I said, "Oh," and then it just struck me, maybe she's actually cleaning them up and putting them in the garbage. So I said, "Oh, you're gonna put them in the garbage?" And well, no, I, I smoke the rest of the tobacco that's in them and. And so I just was able to share a little bit about Jesus. And um, if I would have had a longer time, I think she would have probably been quite open. She was listening to what I had to say. I, you know, shared a little bit about God wanting to, um, sending Jesus, restoring that relationship with him that we lost years ago um, when people sinned originally. And so, yeah, it was a really cool opportunity. So I don't know her name, but I've been praying for her that the Lord would reach her. Hallelujah. As we sing this next song, you're welcome to bring up your tithes and offerings. Jesus is able. He can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or imagine. Isn't that amazing?
Can you just lift your hands today? Just give all of your worship to God. This morning, all of the things of value in your life, let it be all wrapped up in our King, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords who laid down His life for us. Jesus, we thank You so much for pouring out Your life and Your blood for us. Thank You, God, that you're the king of the universe, and yet you stepped into our world. Lord, you stepped into man's world that you had given him. And Lord, even though we threw everything away, God, you came to redeem us. Lord, you valued us. And so, Lord, we, we declare that you are worth more than this whole world to us. More than anything. We worship you, Lord, today. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, worship. glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. We just worship you, our King. Thank you for giving us everything. Thank you for peace. Thank you, God, for assurance. Thank you for hope and joy. And I thank you, God, that you overcome darkness just by speaking and sending your word. We thank you, Father, today. I just pray even now, Holy Spirit, just begin to pour out. Lord, let your healing pour out upon every person here and everyone watching online. Thank you, Lord, for making a way. Thank you for restoring things, restoring relationships, restoring families, restoring jobs. Father, we just thank you, Lord. You are our everything. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Wow. Well, we've got a, a blessing for the kids that are watching today. And there's uh, some kids that didn't make it today. They weren't quite feeling up to it, so we're praying for them. And so uh, a couple of families ended up uh, just watching online today, but there's another family coming with kids. But uh, Lynn, I think you've got a children's lesson so we just want to welcome you up to come and teach the children amen well it ain't much but it's a lot <laughs> <laughs> um, anybody can tell me there's no kids here today I was hoping to ask the question for kids uh, children I bet you know you're pretty smart um, at home and wherever you're watching um, if you were to go to uh, the library and find a book about dinosaurs, can anybody text us what the first line, what you think you know is probably the first line of that book? <laughs> Does anybody in the audience here know? Millions. Millions and millions of years. Millions and millions of years ago. That's the beginning of the, the world's deadly fairy tale. It's a lie and God's word proves it. You know what? It's so big. That's something that God didn't even forget. You know? Dinosaurs are in the Bible. Did you know that? Amen. They were not called dinosaurs. They're called something like Leviathan, Bohemoth. Who gave the name of dinosaurs to dinosaurs? It wasn't God. He called them Leviathan, and Bohemoth. He gives a description in the Bible of what one of those things look like. And you know, this world, they say, oh well, we found dinosaurs. We, we uncovered them. We dug them up. That's true. They're there. God knew they were there. It didn't fool God. It's not a question like you have to uh, like think, well, yes, we maybe think God created the world. And, and people, but uh, God's got a problem with dinosaurs. God does not have a problem with dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> he never did. He created them. He knows about them. He knew about them. And just because they're underneath the ground doesn't say that they've been there for millions and millions of years. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that's basically, I wanted to give you the children a primer this, this Sunday. And uh, we're going to uncover those things because really, as children go to school, they will discover about dinosaurs and it will take 
what the school's agenda, most schools' agenda is that um, the dinosaurs are proof that things happened many, many years ago. And, um, and evolution is um, the way it is, and, uh, but it's not. Creation is the way it is. God created the world and he knew what he was doing. And dinosaurs are not going to catch God off guard. And no matter how many picture books there are, um, there's a whole lot of deception with that. So children, I just want you to understand that dinosaurs did exist. God doesn't have a problem with dinosaurs. And neither should we. God talks about it, dinosaurs in the Word of God. Um, I know it's in Job. I don't know exactly what chapter, but I know it's at least, I think one is talking about 41. And then prior to chapter 2, uh, the prior chapter to that. So I guess that's 40. <laughs> um, so children, be not deceived. God is, um, God's Word is true. And it's true for centuries. And in... The world is not millions of years old, and there's proof of that. Can you believe it? God took the time to record every man's life so that we can tie it all together and we can calculate. It's possible to calculate, to find out, to add up the lives of all these different people, and we can find out how old the age of the earth is. And also, when Jesus Christ arrived on this face of this earth, He changed the very course of time. Before Jesus, everything was called B.C. When Jesus was born, does anybody, what happened, what, what do we call our, what's this? A.D. A.D., right. What does that mean? You know what that means? Does anybody know what that means? I was going to look it up. I know <laughs> it's some Latin thing, but anyway. Anyway, um, when Jesus was born and died on the cross, that changed the course of time. We have a new reference for time after Jesus was born and rose, died and rose again. So Jesus had a profound impact on the world. So boys and girls, moms and dads, adults on all of the world Jesus Christ is important he had a big impact on this world so much even to extends to even each one of us can you imagine that we are what almost more than 2,000 years removed from when Jesus lived and died on, on the cross but yet his blood that he died on the cross that he shed can have impact for our lives even today. That's amazing. Yes. We're looking forward to seeing more and more about how Jesus impacted this world and how we can impact your life. God bless you. Well, that sounds like an exciting uh, series ahead here. Praise God. That is awesome. I love learning about dinosaurs. I thought it was a blast. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, are you guys hungry? Yeah. We got uh, 15 or 20 minutes here to get into God's Word some more. And um, very interesting. I want to talk about overcoming darkness. And one thing I see is that I really believe the enemy's agenda today is to bring the world to a place before Jesus died and rose again. To bring the world to a place where darkness reigned and ruled. But you know, Jesus took the keys of hell and death. And so, and he said, I am the light of the world. He came to bring light to the world. And so today I'd like to talk and share about overcoming darkness. How do we overcome darkness? Because so often when we look around, the world, we look at lives around us and sometimes we can feel really bad for people and we're thinking, man, there's so much darkness, so much deception, there's so many lies and it seems like there's just about wars breaking out everywhere. Times can look dark, but you know what, there is hope and there is
there is a way to overcome darkness with God. So Father in heaven, I just pray right now that you would quicken what needs to come out. I pray Holy Spirit, you would breathe on this. I pray God that you would somehow use this and just equip us today, God, with the importance of knowing how to overcome the darkness in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you have noticed when you look around, things look dark, seems like death is raining sometimes, there's fear everywhere. How many have noticed there's so much fear around? You know, but one thing I've noticed is when I look at creation and I look at the sky and I look at the trees and I go out for a drive, everything seems beautiful. But when I look at people, things seem really messed up. You know, people act in a certain way because they hear a certain word. And you know that children learn to act a certain way based on what they hear and what they're given as an example. And one of the things that's so important to recognize is there's two basic areas that we get information. Number one, it's from people. Or number two, it's from God. There's two main areas that we actually receive information. Most of it in our world is based on parents, siblings, relatives, bosses, co-workers, right? There's all kinds of things and places. We hear words that shape the way we think. And then the, based on the way we think, we come to believe things and then we act out on things. The Bible says that God has given everyone a measure of faith. Everyone in this world has a measure of faith. That's why they have the ability to believe something. Everyone has the ability to choose where to place that faith. And you know what? That's why the enemy wants to indoctrinate our kids at a young age because he knows if his word can get into them and they, they will start to believe it then guess what? They'll place their faith, that measure of faith, the ability to believe in something, will be placed in the wrong words. And that's what spreads darkness. Is It's actually the word of the enemy. There was no darkness as far as in our soul and negativity before Adam and Eve uh, trusted the word of the enemy. The moment they put their trust in the enemy's words, yeah, right. darkness reigned. Death came. And I'll explain what I mean by darkness. But what are we listening to that shapes our beliefs? What We are in an age where there are billions of messages coming to it, sorry, coming at us from every angle. And many messages are conflicting and confusing. You know, some are really loud and confident, and others are quiet. And you know, have you ever noticed that when someone comes around, even if they're wrong, but they're very confident and bold, people tend to just let them listen to them and give way to that? You know, the enemy's a bully. The devil's a bully. But you know, the Bible says, be still, Quiet yourself and know God. Hear His voice. Very often the Holy Spirit, God's voice is speaking to you. And it's usually not the loud, pushy voice. So how can we overcome darkness? Well, like I said, it's basically whose word are we listening to? Jesus said we can observe the fruit of a tree and then we can tell whether that tree is good or bad. Right? Man, I've, I've gone to like BC and you can get some really good peaches and really good fruit off of good trees. But some trees, you know, you take a bite of that fruit and it's like, what on earth is this? Some dried out, chewy, thing like, I don't know what it is. It wasn't good. Sometimes I've had a fruit that's not good at all. But if that fruit is remaining that way, then that's a bad tree. That's pretty simple, right? 
Some of the most passionate speeches that we hear can be dangerous. You know, passion in, in itself is, doesn't mean someone's right. It doesn't mean the fruit is good. We have to look for the fruit of what's happening in people's lives. It doesn't mean that we judge wrongly and we need to be careful how quickly we assume something when we look at someone. But as we get to know them and, and we get to see them over a period of time and their reactions and their decisions, we can see what kind of fruit there is. But we need to be careful that we don't aren't led into a place of darkness. Often God's voice within us seems to be the quietest. But here's the thing. When you know the voice of God within you, you can become filled with the knowledge of Jesus. The Word of God. That's who He is and He is the truth. And the thing is when that fills us, the Bible says that when the eye is good, the body is full of light. And so when, when we get a revelation of Jesus and He fills us, our whole being becomes full of light. Praise God. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 says this, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I know Len was talking about the earth. And then it says the earth was, or became without form and void. These Hebrew words refer to something being destroyed and becoming a wasteland. And as a result, this is what I see, darkness was upon the face of the deep. You know, in Job 38, the Bible seems to indicate that through events that happened, that God wrapped the earth and somehow He put it in a state of preservation and wrapped it in darkness. Imagine if, if darkness, and this is kind of darkness in the Hebrew means that light cannot even penetrate through. Can you imagine if our earth was wrapped in darkness that no light could penetrate through? I bet you we would be pretty solid frozen very quickly. Wouldn't we? So we don't know exactly what happened and how long that state of existence stayed there, I don't know. But what we do know is that the Spirit of the Lord began to hover over the face of the deep. And in the original language, what it means, the face means referring to, uh, similar to a person whose face turns. And then the deep means like a churning of the waters, something that's moving. And so it says here that God said, as the Spirit of the Lord hovered, the Lord God said, let there be light. And in the original, it seems to indicate God said this, light be. Light be. It's time to exist. And guess what? There was light. There was light. Say light. Light. That's too quick. That's too quiet. One more time. Say light. 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 God spoke. And as soon as his word came out, there was light. Hallelujah. God's word changed the darkness and turned things into light. Woo! Hallelujah. His word dispels darkness. His word is light. His word is revelation. You know, Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That means he is light. He brings revelation. He reveals mysteries. God's word is always revealing things. Psalm 119, verse 105 says, Your word, O Lord, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 
Jesus is the Word of God. Listen, He's a lamp. If you don't know which way to go, if you seek God, He will show you. Yeah. And He's a light. He shows you the way you need to go. You know, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He demonstrated for us very clearly. See, when the prophets spoke, it wasn't always clear to people. They knew something was coming in the future, some kind of salvation. But what did it look like? Well, Jesus said, here I am. The Father has sent me, and this is what it looks like exactly. So he was the perfect revelation of God's will for us and his salvation. You know, when people are in the grips of the devil or the enemy, the spirit of darkness, you know, it's impossible to find their own way out of darkness. But I believe the Spirit of God is breathing on situations. And you know what? I think God is just waiting for us to speak His Word over those people. Mm. So that the lights can come on and these people can recognize, wow, they can see hope. They can begin to find their way. They can begin a relationship with God. And you know what? Jesus will dispel the darkness within them. I remember numerous times in my work office, people coming in, and even on the street sometimes, people will come up to me or other believers, and they'll say, there's light in you. I see a light around you. I see something glowing. <laughs> well, yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> He lives in me. Jesus is the light of the world and He lives in me. And because of that, He said that you become the light of the world. Amen. So when we show up, guess what? When we show up and we're letting Jesus live in us and through us, the darkness has to move out of the way. We begin to overcome darkness. It is dispelled. And people see the hope of heaven. They see Christ in you, the anointing of God in you, the hope of glory. Just like, you know, the most wicked kings wanted to destroy one godly leader. You know, we look at Joseph. I love the story of Daniel too. It's amazing. The enemy tried to destroy them. This king was so upset that they would not worship his image. But they had to choose whether they were going to receive the fear, the word of darkness of the king, or the word of God. You know, and those guys, before they were thrown in the fire, they said, oh king, we want you to know something. Our God is fully able to deliver us. Even if He doesn't, we will not bow to your image. You know, they had the Word. They, they had the Word of God memorized in them. They had the Word um, established in their hearts. And they were not overcome. But they saw something happen where the light, Jesus, showed up in the fire with them. Amen. Hmm. You know, our God is a consuming fire. Isn't it cool when He consumes the other fire, that the, that the earthly fire had no power over them? <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, I've been around campfires, and man, people know it. You walk by, and they're like, man, you smell. And you're probably almost used to it already after a while, you know, after a few hours. But they couldn't even smell smoke on these guys. Not one hair was singed. And that's, I mean, you know that's a miracle. If you've ever used hairspray, or you've been around fire long enough, you probably singed a few hairs. 
I remember uh, a guy that was working on a truck. This was one of the funniest things I ever saw. It was scary for only for a few seconds. But these guys were put, they put this motor in this vehicle. It wasn't my truck, it was someone else. And the other, the one guy on top, he was trying to set the timing. And then the other guy would crank it over, you know, and all of a sudden he got spark and the whole thing backfired. And, and he's looking at us and his hair's on fire. He's going like this and, you know, and he was fine. And we we're like, oh no. And then he was fine, but his eyebrows were gone and he's missing half his hair. And then we laughed our heads off. It was so funny. But you know, with Jesus, these guys didn't even get their hair singed. That's amazing. But you know, there's a way that we can overcome darkness, and it's by the power of Jesus. It's the power of God's Word. It overcomes darkness, and I really believe that we're in a time where the world desperately needs to hear us share the Word of God, you know? But we have to be creative. A lot of people have heard a word without power for many years, and, and you know, I think sometimes it's easy... Um, I've even been around people that say they're believers and I can hardly listen to them, even though they quote the scripture all the time because they're attitude. See, we have to come with an attitude of servanthood and an attitude that cares about people. But you know what? A lot of Christians, I'm sorry, but this is a challenge to us. A lot of Christians are just salesmen. Have you ever been to a bad salesman? And you know, they just tell you, they just... Okay, what's your budget? I'm like, I mean, they don't go far with me. They probably don't like me because I'm just like, listen, budget isn't the main issue here. My main issue is am I getting a good bargain for my, a good vehicle for the price? That's what matters to me. You know, I don't care. Some people, what they, what they care about is gas mileage. For others, it's safety, right? For others, it's speed and handling. So you have to listen to the need and say, God, what in your word can help meet that need? But, you know, bad salesmen, if they realize what they were doing, they just push because what do they want? They want to get their paycheck. That's their number one priority. You know, a lot of times for us, it's maybe we just want to feel good. Oh, man, I gave that word to them. You know, but that's just religious sometimes. It is important. We need to get the Word of God to them, but it needs to be as a, a point of service. It needs to be as a point of, of hope and saying, God, I, want to, I just want to fight with them and for them. I want to see them succeed, Lord. I want to see them win and overcome the dark areas of their life. Praise God. So one of the things that we're doing as a church to help overcome darkness is we're partnering this year with different places and uh, we just in December we reached almost 50,000 people for $300 online and so we've talked to the council and now we're we're saying let's up let's up our budget let's say let's go $4,000 and start to reach a lot more people amen so we're gonna be doing lots of ads we're gonna work with online radio and different sources because you know what, we might only have a certain window of time to use the tools we have. Now God, God will always open doors, but I think let's take advantage of what we have and let's use it to the best of our ability. And so thank you all of you guys that are investing in to outreach and missions. We need to declare the word of the Lord over the nations because God's word is light. The world needs to see. The world needs to see what is destroying them. And they need to see where hope is. In Psalm 119, 130, it says this, The entrance of your word gives light. The entrance of God's word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Jesus spoke again in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. Who, whoever follows me shall not walk, walk in darkness, but has the light of life. That means they have the revelation of how to live. 
And they're not confused. They're not lost in this life. They become to know. They get to know like, wow, I know what my purpose is. I know what my mission is. I know where I'm going. And I know where I'm going after this life. They have confidence. They have assurance. And this is what God wants to give to the world. John 8, 12 says, Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. Right? We will have the light of life, he says. And in John 9, 5, he says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So what happened when he left? He said, my disciples are now the light of the world. Yes. Right? Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. You know, last uh, Wednesday, Wedding Wednesday, I was teaching about Moses grabbing that rod when, when Amalek was fighting Israel. And he went to the top of the hill and he stood. He was at his tallest point and he lifted up the rod of God. And as long as he held it up, the Israelites were winning the battle. You know what, you guys? I want to lift the word of God. I believe all of you can be winners. I believe each one of you can overcome the darkness around you. And I'm willing to hold up the word of God boldly and declare it over your life, over your situation. And you know what? To pray for you because I believe when I do that as a leader, those under me will prosper. Those under me will win the battles. Hallelujah. But there's times where I'm going to need you guys to come and I'm tired and I'm maybe, maybe discouraged and somebody props up a big stone under me. Like they did Moses. They got something under him he could lean on, you know? And then they held up his arms until that battle was won. We're not quitting. We need each other. Yes. Praise God. So we don't put a lamp under a basket. Amen. We put it on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Amen. We're the household of God. We want to bring the light of Jesus. We want to give hope to one another. And I declare that, you know what, your workplaces are going to see the light of Christ in you. They already are. Amen. You guys are making an impact. But you know what? We've got different industries that we're working in. Right? We've got restaurants, we got Home Depots, we got hospitals, we got banks, mm -hmm. we got maintenance places, we got universities. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you know what? We need to pray for each other. It's so important that we pray for each industry, each place that there's impact. And you know what? We have to have grace and understanding that each person might have to approach their workplace with a unique way. And that's what I love about bringing people together. Because we can, we can come together and we can have grace and say, you know what, you might have to do this. And you know what, I know you're full of faith. You're full of faith. I mean, you know, we all like our freedoms. Amen. Amen. Well, all two of us do. Praise God. The rest of you can just, no. no we, all like, we all like comforts, right? We do. And that, I don't think they're bad, but you know, sometimes our flesh just loves to stay in comfort. And then we never overcome darkness. You know, people put up with a lot of things in their life, but today Jesus says, come to me, and I want to give you some rest. Come to me, and I want to break some things out of your life. I want to shine some light into every area of your life. I want to penetrate every dark corner in your life. So if you've had darkness in your life, it could be thoughts, it could be emotions, sometimes just certain thoughts, we just let them run, you know, because we're tired. But sometimes we got to grab a hold of it and say, now enough of this in Jesus' name. Right. And Lord, I'm just exposing this area to you, Lord. But what it takes is, it's going to take the entrance of God's word 
to take that area over. This is why the enemy will get us to resist the word of God and getting into it. This is exactly what it is. Because he knows when the word comes in, the darkness goes out. He's right. <laughs> yes. The darkness has to leave. <laughs> Hallelujah. So today, if you will allow Jesus into any area of your life, you know what, just open your heart. Can we just stand together as we close? Just for a second, Father, we just open our hearts. We're asking you, Lord, to shine on us, just to show us, Lord, if there's any area of ignorance, any area of darkness, any area that we need revelation in. And Lord, we ask you today to come into every area of our life. Drive out the darkness, Lord, remove the fear. We receive your love, your power, and a stable mind. Today, I just want you for a moment just to introduce any area in your life that's been a struggle. Are you guys hearing me? Any area of your life that's a struggle. Just open it up and introduce the darkness to Jesus. Say, so your area of my life that's been a struggle, I'm introducing you now to my king, to the light of my world. Jesus, come and touch that area of my life. Lord, I welcome you to come and shine in that area. And Lord, transform me today. Father, we thank you for hearing us. We thank you, Lord, today, God, that as you reveal to us what areas need attention, where to let you in, Lord, then help us to now also commit to backing it up with your word. Lord, help us to commit now to putting your scripture, your word into that area of our life. And Lord, we thank you that, that this darkness is being dispelled. And Lord, we also ask you to help us in the world around us to speak your word of life and your light. Lord, forgive us for any areas that we have withheld you from stepping into. And right now, Father, we replace the old thinking and we begin to place your word into those areas. And we thank you, Lord, when you said, light be, that we're going to find that light will be existing in us. We're going to find that light will have overtaken any dark area. So, Lord, we thank you for new beginnings right now. Just like in the beginning, you said, let there be light. So, Lord, we speak revelation today in Jesus' name. Now, if you don't know Jesus, and, you know, I just want to say there will be darkness in your life when you don't know Jesus. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person, per se. But listen, what happens is it's just a result of separation from God. Sin blocks the presence of the light of God and His Word. You know, if we were blocked from receiving all sunlight, it would be bad. If we were completely separated from receiving the sun's light and life and warmth. You know, we would be in the dark. We would die. But this is what sin does. This is what sin has done. It blocks God's presence from our life. And it kills us. And it keeps us in the dark. But if you'd like to change that today and get on the path of life, God invites you to his life because Jesus came as the word of God he was born as the son of God and he lived a righteous perfect life for you and I and then he suffered and died to pay the price to buy us back from sin and death's prison but you know what he was raised to life the third day to ensure that we can inherit eternal life and then he gave us his spirit to help us live 
this life like he did. Praise God. That is good news. And so God's kingdom wants to live inside of you. If you would like to receive Jesus today, I want to tell you, you're not too far gone. We have all messed up. But Jesus paid for every mess up in your life. You haven't done too much wrong that God won't forgive it. Jesus paid the price and God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And the Bible says this, it's very simple. He doesn't say become religious. He says, if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus can be Lord in your life and you believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. He'll forgive every wrong you've ever done. And he'll bring healing into your life. He'll equip you to bring his life to the world. To help others start a relationship with him too and be sure of heaven. So just pray this with me right now if this is you. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of your son Jesus Christ. I ask you to come into my life. Save me, lead me, be my friend. I turn away, God, from my own sin. And I ask you to forgive me. Just take out any hardness and a hard heart that's in me and give me a new heart, a soft heart before you. And I just renounce the words of the devil, the words of Satan that accuses me and tries to destroy me. I renounce his words, his ways, and I renounce false religion. I turn my back on the world and I follow you, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for me. I believe that you rose on the third day from the dead. And I thank you, you're coming back again for me. Now I confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is my Savior and my Lord. Right now, by faith, I receive the free gift of salvation. Hallelujah. If you've done that by faith, just say, I'm saved. I'm, saved. I'm born again. Born again. And I'm on my way to heaven because Jesus lives in me. Praise God. And you know what? Heaven has come to live inside of you. And you can begin to walk and experience the power of God in this life. So we just want to welcome you to the family of God. And we'd love to send you a Bible. We'd love to help you start on your journey. God bless you in Jesus' name.